I'm Catherine from Minerva, and today we are going to stitch up the Shelby dress and romper. Let's get to it. Now to start, we need to gather up all of the materials that we are going to need. And the first place that I like to go is looking for fabrics for this. Now, in this particular pattern, fabric plays a key component. In order to get that nice drape and billowy effect that this dress or romper requires, you need to have a lightweight woven fabric. So some of the options that the pattern suggests are a rayon chalet, a voile, a viscose, so anything that has a great degree of fluidity to it. Now we've made it nice and easy for you and I've put together a number of kits and I will link them down below for you so that you can take that guesswork out of which fabric is going to work perfectly for you. So let's go over exactly what we need for making our Shelby dress or romper. Okay, so we're going to start off with this beautiful fabric here. Then we get a paper printed pattern of the Shelby dress and some interfacing that we can fuse on to stabilize things. Of course, you want your needles as well as buttons to button this up and some matching thread. So once you have gathered up all of your materials that you are going to need and you have your beautiful paper pattern handy, we are going to select the size. Now the True Bias Shelby romper and dress comes in a size range of size 0 through 16 or a chest of 32 inches through to 44.5 inches a waist of 26 inches up to 38.5 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches up to 46.5 inches. So you have a good degree of variation in those sizes. So if you are between sizes, don't forget to grade between those sizes so that it does fit you accurately. Now, I always suggest doing up a muslin. That being said, when I did up this pattern, it fit me perfectly right when I tried on that muslin. And for reference, I am 5'5", five five, and I did have to take a bit of length off of this dress just because it was a little bit long on me. It does say that it is graded and sized to a person who is 5'6", so that is probably why I had to do that. Now, once we have all of that ready, the next thing that we need to do is cut out our pattern. Now you can cut directly on your paper pattern, but I always like to save my original pattern pieces in case I need to make a different size later. So I like to trace mine out on tracing paper using a pencil, and that way I can make any modifications to that paper pattern based on my specific measurements. So once that is all done and cut out, you can go ahead and pre-wash and dry your fabric in the way you were going to launder it, give it a nice good press, and then start cutting out your pattern pieces. Pay careful attention to the grain lines on your pattern pieces to make sure that they match up with the grain lines on your pattern. That way you don't have anything that is going to be off grain and stretching in a way that you don't want. And now that we have all of that taken care of, comes the fun part. Let's get sewing. Step number one is going to be fusing that interfacing. So we are going to take the facing pieces of the back neckline, and these are the two front pieces. We're going to fuse that on. Now we're going to stay stitch the neckline. So we're going to stay stitch from the shoulders to the center, and then on the front pieces down from the shoulder to the center front. So you want to go within that seam allowance here, and I'm just doing a quarter of an inch, but as long as you do it within the seam allowance, not a big deal. And I just like to flip mine around and then go to that center. Don't go all the way around or it is going to warp that neckline. So when that's done, we are going to begin the neckline facing. So those pieces that we fuse together, we're going to place them right sides together with the front and back facing pieces matching at the shoulder seams here. Using a couple of pins, then we're going to stitch in place. Don't search these. Press those seams open and then go and search the outside edge. And I just take a wee little hair off along the edge so you can see it's the outside, not the inside edge that needs to be surged. 
now we're going to sew the ties here. So we're going to take this piece and we are going to fold it in half right sides together. Now, because this fabric is a bit more drapey, pressing it really does help with this step. And then you can stitch all the way down. Once that's stitched, I take a safety pin and I feed that through the other end of my tie. Also, I'm just going to speed up this process a bit because it can get a wee bit fiddly, but it comes together quite nicely. Once it's at the end, you just pull everything through and it is all complete. Next, go ahead and press it so it looks nice and flat, just like this one here. And then I'm just going to trim the edge and then I'm going to fold it over twice. So once and then twice and then it's stitch going down. It's going to look something like this. So let me show you a trick. I like to use paper, not tissue paper, but regular old paper. This one I pulled out of my journal here. And this helps to stabilize this so your fabric doesn't get sucked into your feed dogs and it gives a much neater appearance on this. So once that's done, just rip that paper away and trim any of your excess threads. Now we're going to sew the back bodice. So this is a center back portion and there are two notches along the waistline. That is where we are going to want to attach those ties. So I am just placing my tie in here and I am going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And then we are just going to baste these ties in place just along the edge. So you can see I've got them basted in place. Now we need to get these ties out of the way so they don't get stitched into any of our seams. I'm just folding it in on itself and then I am pinning it together. And then a nice little trick that I like to do is I actually like to pin it to the back of my bodice here. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other side. This helps to prevent anything from coming into those seams and having to unpick that later on. We don't like to use that seam ripper. So next with right sides together, we're going to take that center back and the side back panel, and we're going to match them at the shoulder seam, going all the way down the length of the bodice and matching up any of the notches that you have. And it should end perfectly where the hem of the dress is. I like to use a decent amount of pins on a lighter weight fabric, just because it gives a little bit more control when I am stitching it in place. We're going to do the exact same thing to the other side back and stitch as well as overlock or serge those edges. And then we're going to fold it out this way. You can give that a good press as well. And you can see our ties are sandwiched in between and they'll tie in the back like so. Now we're going to stitch up the front bodice. This is done virtually the same. We're going to take that center front bodice piece and then the side front bodice piece, and we're going to match them up at the shoulder seams and that front bodice piece where you can see that bust curves out along that princess seam. That is where we're going to match that up. Do pay attention to all of the notches on the pattern that you transferred onto your fabric. And we're going to pin and stitch this the exact same way that we did the back sides and center backs. So once that is stitched, because it's a curve, we are going to clip these curves. Then when we get to this bus point, we are actually going to notch it out because a curve that is convex needs to be notched out and concave is where we're going to do a single notch. Then go ahead and overlock it and then you can press those seams. Now we're going to sew the front to the back. So this is the back panel. We're going to match up at the shoulder seams, both of the front panels, making sure that you are placing the center front towards the center. And then I like to match up just along that seam that we have with the princess seams. They should line up fairly well when you're pinning them together and do the same for the exact other piece here. And once we have them pinned in place, then we can head on over to our machine. We can stitch them and then go ahead and overlock them. I have also pressed them towards the back of the garment because when you're doing shoulder seams, they always get pressed to the back. Now we are going to sew the facings. So with the facing pieces, we are going to place them right sides together. And I'm going to match up the shoulder seams first. And so now you can see why we have pressed those facing seams flat and open as opposed to surging them together. It's just going to help to reduce that bulk along the shoulder seam. 
then go ahead and place the pins. I like to do the curve of the back neckline first and then go in and do the curves along the front neckline and then the nice straight piece going down the front button placket. I kind of do the more difficult curved parts first and then the easier straight pieces last. That's how I like to go ahead and pin it. And then when we are done doing that, pop on over to your machine and then we are going to stitch all the way around. So once that's done being stitched, once again, we are going to clip it because there are curves. So notice how I am just making these clips in here. We don't need to do any of the notches because we don't have any convex curves going in here. And once that is all done, even before I press it, I like to go in and understitch it. You can press it if you want, but I find the tension of me pulling the fabric outwards as well as stitching when I'm doing these understitching tends to do just a fine job, but you can press it if you really want to. So go ahead and make sure that that seam allowance is facing your facing pieces. And once you have that understitching, now we can press the facing towards the back. Now, the reason we do this understitching is so that all of the turn of the cloth and that facing doesn't show from the right side. Don't ever skip this step. It is what makes these garments so much more beautiful. It's the details that you don't always see that makes that much more of a difference. And so once we have that all nicely pressed, I'm just slowing it down here along these curves. So just pay careful attention so you don't get any puckers along that curve line. Just continue, use a decent amount of steam. If you have a delicate fabric, do use a pressing cloth. I'm not using one here, just so you can see a little bit more what I am doing and where my fingers are going. So the next step here, we want to secure this facing along the shoulder seam. So find your shoulder seam, flip it to the right side and stitch in the ditch. That's in between where that seam joins. So you can see I've got the seam of my shoulder seam on the right side. I'm going to back stitch and then very carefully along the ditch in that seam, stitch and then back stitch. Barely see it on the front and you can hardly see it on the back. Now we're going to stitch up the sleeves. So with this, we are going to do two rows of gathering stitches. So set that stitch length to the highest it'll go. Mine's five millimeters. Then we can go ahead and pull those together. Then I am just flipping up a quarter of an inch along the bottom of the sleeve. And then I'm doing a double fold with that. And then just go ahead and leave that there. So you don't want to stitch it. That comes later. We're going to place it right sides together and we're going to unfold those areas we pressed. This is called a memory hem. And then we're going to stitch down. I also overlocked the edges, but now we can fold it back up using that memory hem. Now you want to stitch your side seams next and search them. And then we're going to insert our sleeve. So we've got two notches on one side, one on the other. Two notches always denotes the back of a sleeve. A single notch always denotes the front of a sleeve. They'll also match up to the markings on your pattern. So I found where my double notches are on the sleeve. So we've got the double and then I shift it down to where the underarm of my sleeve and the side seam of my dress aligns. And I'm going to pin that first. Then I'm going to pin the very top or the shoulder of the seam. And the top of that sleeve is marked by a small notch and then I'm going to adjust my gathers on both the front and the back of the sleeve so that they fit perfectly within those two measurements. And this is how you fit a sleeve very nicely, making sure that all the gathers are nice and evenly distributed between the front and the back. Okay, so now that we have that done, this is what it looks like. I've also overlocked or surged the edges and your little cap sleeve should look just like so. Next, we want to hem that sleeve. You have that memory hem already pressed, so just go ahead and stitch it like so. Now to hem the bottom of your dress. So with this, we have our facing pieces. So we're actually going to flip this so that the facing and the front of your dress are right sides together. And then I'm just going to pin that in place and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the dress. And so this is where we get a really nice bottom. We're going to stitch here. And then we are going to clip this corner just at a diagonal to help reduce that bulk when we flip it right side out. So you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and we are going to end up flipping this up in just a moment here. 
But what I've done is I've went and overlocked the edges before I do that because that gives me a perfect quarter inch seam. Just a little trick if you have it. Yes, it takes a little extra time, but the time it saves you in pressing and having to measure saves you so much more your choice, but I find this to be a really great sewing tip that I really like to use. So next I am just folding over that quarter of an inch hem along the entire bottom of the skirt hem. So bear in mind, we haven't flipped out those facings to the right side yet. As you can see, they've got that bottom of that facing on the other side there. Now we can flip it right side out. So we're going to do that on both sides here. And then I like to get out a tool to go on and really get those corners out and nice and crisp. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to press this. But when you bring your iron up to the hem, you'll notice it naturally wants to fold into that double folded hem perfectly in line with the facing. So go ahead and do that which is also why I love having that surged or overlocked edge for that guide because it gives a perfect measurement every time. Go ahead and stitch that in place and your hem is all complete. Now for the button placket. So with this, you're going to use your template for the button placket. Obviously that curved end goes to the top and I am just using a couple of pattern weights to hold my tissue in place. And then I'm going to come in with my chalk and I am going to mark exactly where those button holes and buttons will be placed on both the um, overlap and underlap of my placket. So this is where my button holes are going. So I'm just going to place my button hole foot on here and I'm just going to stitch that. Make sure you're using thread that matches your garment. And then instead of using a seam ripper, I like to use a buttonhole chisel because you have no mistakes. Next, we are going to place the buttons on the opposite side. So go ahead and attach those buttons in place. And now for the reveal. We're all done our Shelby dress and romper. And we would love to see your versions of this if you had followed along and are making them as well. Do be sure to use the hashtags so that we can find them. And if you don't have an account here on Minerva, do be sure to create one. It is completely free and we love seeing all of the beautiful makes that you create here. Now, if you're interested in checking me out here on Minerva, I can be found at Sheer Stitchery and you can find the link to my profile down below. Until next time, makers. Bye.